in 1977, after four years of the Eurocrime craze being the then biggest action fad in Italy, director Umberto Lindsay, who had already worked with genre stars Tomas Milian, Maurizio Merli, and John Saxon, was able to direct all three stars together in The Cynic, The Rat, and The Fist. And by together, I mean kind of sort of together. But we'll get to that later. The Cynic, the Rat, and the Fist was a box office hit in Italy, which is not all that surprising because not only did it start of those three icons of Eurocrime, it was also a sequel to Umberto Lindsay's hit film of the previous year, Rome Armed to the Teeth. Now, Rome Armed to the Teeth also starred Tomas Milian and Maurizio Merli, but Italians weren't big sticklers for continuity, and Tomas played different characters in the two movies. It's sort of like that other famous three-name title, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where Lee Van Cleef played a different character in that film than he had previously in the series. But Maurizio Merli does play the same character in both Cynic, The Rat in the Fist, and Rome Arm to the Teeth, Leonardo Tanzi. He's just had a, the character's just had a change of profession in between the two stories. In Rome Arm to the Teeth, he was the typical Maurizio Merli role, the tough cop who loved going to town on the skulls of no-good hoodlum punks. In Cynic, he's now retired from the police force and is having something to do with murder mystery novels. Maybe he's a technical consultant who's fact-checking them, something like that. I've never been entirely clear. But like I said, the Eurocrime genre had been all the rage in Italy for about four years by the time of 1977's The Cynic, The Rat, and The Fist. But star Maurizio Merli had only been a movie star, at least, for two years by the time of that movie. But in those mere two years, 1975 and 1976, Merley had played an angry, frustrated cop a whopping five times. So playing a retired cop was a nice change of pace. Yeah, the laser foolishness was a change of pace too, I guess. But uh, no, playing a, a retired cop was a nice change of pace for Merley, even if ultimately he did all the same effortless beating, shoving, stool slinging, and swing kicking as usual. Maurizio Merli became a superstar of the genre in a 1975 movie called Violent Rome. And he did so in part by imitating the blonde-haired look of actor Franco Nero, who had been in the smash 1973 movie... High crime. Um, and so blonde hair and blue eyes became the signature look for Merli, a look he wore very well. And yet, the Cynic, the Rat, and the Fist, at least in the English dub, seems to be pointing out how unnatural this look is for an Italian male, almost mocking it. He's a bleach blonde. This is blue eyes. Turquoise eyes. A blonde faggot. So, he looked like a fag copper to you. Well, it must be me. No one else wears turquoise contacts. American actor John Saxon had been acting in Eurocrime movies since 1973, coming over, doing a couple weeks on a movie, and then going back to his Hollywood career. He was Italian-American and bilingual, just like his character Frank DiMaggio. I want you to do a real good job on this, capish? So that made it easier for Saxon to act in Italian productions. And he had a little mom and pop, literally husband and wife, talent agent team in Italy. But basically, he did parts for Italian movies, then left, never knowing what became of the movies. Were they hits? Were they flops? He didn't know. He never even attended a premiere of one of these films, he once told me. He did stick around to do his own dubbing, as these movies were shot without direct sound. Uh, this was actually something he was very skilled at, this sort of looping to match his voice on screen, as he had actually trained in this art back in his old studio system days in Hollywood as a contract player for Universal in the 50s. Saxon was also over there in the 70s enough to know that this Maurizio Merli guy was a big star in Italy. And you know who else knew that? Well, Merli himself. Not saying that that necessarily went to the actor's head, but uh, Saxon did catch the star referring to himself in the third person from time to time. Now, Saxon had already made a movie before with a cynic co-star Renzo Palmer, one of the two great chubbers of Eurocrime cinema, the other, of course, being Mario Merola. Uh, and in Cynic, the Rat in the Fist, Renzo Palmer plays the police. What the hell is this? Seriously? You know I only had two picture frames. We only have two walls in the corner here. I don't think Tomas needs any extra glory or exposure. Maurizio Merli. You know when he died? Before he was 50 in 1989. 
He could use some extra glory. He could use some extra exposure. John Saxon had a nice long career, but as a character actor, you want to name his lead roles, his starring roles? Name them. I bet you could do it on your fingers. You got the bees, you got the glove, you got that Euro crime movie with Renzo Palmer, Cross Shot, Moonshine County Express. That's all I got off the top of my head. So just cool it with the Tomas promotion, all right? These are going to have to do. So Tansy's switch of professions isn't the only new thing about the character. And no, I'm not talking about the lasers. No, what I mean is he's had a change in locale between the end of Rome, Arm to the Teeth and beginning of Cynic. He ends the first movie in Rome and then begins the second movie in Milan, then says he's going to Geneva, but actually goes back to Rome. Meanwhile, Renzo's police captain character starts in Milan and he has the unlikely scenario of getting transferred to Rome on a whim. So you got yourself transferred to Rome, huh? Yep. I wanted to be closer to you. It seems as if it would have made more sense for Tanzi to end the first film in Rome, begin the second film in Rome, pretend to go to Geneva, but actually stay in Rome. Then Renzo's character could have been the whole time where else? In Rome. It just doesn't make a lot of sense the way they did it. But you know what else doesn't make much sense? The whole rambling plot. No, The Cynic, The Rat, and the Fist is a movie whose power is in all its individual scenes, all its individual action set pieces. Uh, this movie goes the extra mile in its violence and its setups for violence, whether it's combat abruptly triggered by faulty wiring. For you, son of a bitch. Or some observant kid. Oh, look at the knife, mama. Or whether it's how a location factors into an action sequence, like when a gunfight occurs in a porn studio. <laughs> or a chase occurs in a department store. And all these great set pieces are connected by dialogue scenes that qualify as some of the most macho and vulgar of the entire Eurocrime genre. Speaking of tale, the ballad of the shithead. This Chinaman has broken my balls. Aren't your balls broken yet? You lazy shit, you fucking shit! Snipping up his ass. Don't give me that bullshit, let's get out of here. And as if you need further proof that the violent set pieces were good, the golf ball punishment scene from Cynic the Rat and the Fist got appropriated for a very similar scene in 1998's Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. So Cynic has clearly gone down as influential. Amongst die-hard, gossipy Eurocrime fans, this movie's reputation is for being the production where Tomas Milian and Maurizio Merli weren't getting along, and the two stars never set foot on set at the same time. In his book Italian Crime Filmography, Roberto Curti reviews the film thinking that Tomas looks disinterested in playing the part and implying that a lot of the performance was actually created in the dubbing. Uh, come on, man, please. Come on. I mean, please. Huh. Maybe that's why Tomas's Italian dubber gets a special mention in the credits. In any case, the diamond ring wearing character of China is a pretty interesting one. And the film not only gives him a shtick, sending funeral announcements to his intended targets, but it also lets us see the behind the scenes problem of carrying out this gimmick. D, my, that's right, how many G's in Dimaggio? I forget, is it one or two? There's a two here. So many of these staple Euro crime moments, worthy of a drinking game almost, are present in this film, including crass, obvious Marlboro and JMB product placement, Uniformed cops being ineffectual relative to the cool plainclothes hero. Opening credits over a car's POV driving shot. A sheepo style mugging, massive doses of misogyny, and... Oh my god. I don't even know what to say. This is a rat mask? Because Tomas is apparently the, the rat of the title? Is that what this is? Do we even know that for sure? I mean, clearly Maurizio Merli is the fist. Clearly that. But who's the cynic and who's the rat? I've never really known. I mean, the first thing we learn about Tomas's character is that he didn't squeal while he's in prison. That's not very rat-like. Yeah, you don't know. Fucking God damn it, fucking. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
pound your face in. What is it, Marita? Merlin said you fucking shit. Oh, I had it. I had it. Um, Mr. King Street's War. Another John Saxon starring role.